This video covers basic chart area chart. The structure of this video is as follows. Visual code walkthrough, JavaScript code build, and the summary. All right, let's get started. Visual code walkthrough. We will use the data from the d3js.org website area chart example. We will save this data into a file called data.tsv. This file is the one that will be loaded asynchronously using the d3.tsv request functionality. First, we start with the doc type, meta character set, and the CSS styling. This is the standard doc type setting, meta character set definition, and the CSS styling of the DOM elements we will generate through the use of the d3.js code. Next, we go into the JavaScript sections of the document. First, we load the d3.js JavaScript library from the web. This uses the d3 code hosted by the d3.js.org website. Next, we go into the d3 code that will create the area chart. The d3 margin convention sets up the SVG container size as well as defines the inner drawing space. The SVG container will be 500 pixels tall by 960 pixels wide. Next, we have a date formatting function. The idea behind this code is that it will take a string formatted in the way specified and convert it into a JavaScript date object. This takes in a string that has a date, then a dash, then the three letter code for a month, then a dash, and finally a two digit number for the year. This takes in the data from the data.tsv file and converts the dates to JavaScript date objects. Next, we have a time scale function for the x axis data. This code will create a scaling function where the range goes from zero to the width of the inner drawing space. We will set the domain later after we have loaded in the data. Next, we have a scale linear function for the y-axis data. This code will create a scaling function where the range goes from the height of the inner drawing space to zero. The height and the number zero are reversed so that numbers passed into the scaling function will be converted to numbers that act as if the SVG coordinate space had been inverted along the y-axis. So as the y-axis variable grows, it will move up rather than down. Next, we create the x-axis function. We pass in the x-scale function we created earlier and then give the axis an orientation of bottom. This means that the text will be below the line. We can pass in the x scaling function before we define the domain because we have not evaluated the x axis function, so we still have time to define the domain. Then we create the y axis the same way. We pass in the y scaling function we created earlier and give the axis an orientation of left. This orientation will make the axis vertical and make the text appear on the left of the line. The next code is new for us. The d3.svg.area function is an SVG shape that d3 provides for us. It is defined by passing two linear functions where the x coordinate is the same for both, but the y coordinates are different. The polygon is then defined as the area inside of the two lines. The y0 and y1 are the two different linear accessor functions. In this case, y0 will be the height of the inner drawing space which means it will be at the bottom of the inner drawing space all the way across the width of the graph. The y1 will be the closing price for each data point that is then scaled through the y linear scaling function. The area between the y1 and y0 will then be filled in. The way D3 does this is by returning an SVG path that is a closed piecewise linear curve. The way this works is that x and y0 proceed to make a path from the left to the right, and then the x and y1 proceed to close the path by going from right to left. Finally, the inside is filled in. The next code creates the SVG container and the inner drawing space. The next code is where D3 does the asynchronous call to the server to get the data and then builds the chart. In this case, the callback function is an anonymous function. Let's go through the callback function section by section. First, we have code that iterates through the array of JavaScript objects. For each JavaScript object, it does two things. One, it converts the date string to a JavaScript date object. And two, it converts the closing price from a string to a number. Next, we set the domain for the xscale function. 
Now that we have the data, we can set the domain of the xscale function by using the d3.extent method. This returns an array containing the minimum and maximum dates. An anonymous function is used to get the date out of the data objects. Next, we set the domain for the yscale function. Now that we have the data, we can set the domain of the yscale function by using the d3.max functionality. The domain of the y function is a continuous linear function, so the domain will be defined as going from 0 to the max closing price found in the data. And then finally, we draw the closed piecewise linear curve SVG path that is the graph of the data. This is the D3 pattern. We define the drawing space. We append a path. We use datum data since there is only one piece of data generated, which is the path variable. The path instructions are generated by the D3 path generator functionality using that one array. Then we give the path a class of area. This is how the CSS knows to provide styling to the area. And finally, we add the attribute D, which is the D3 path generator function. This will take in the data that was passed into the datum and generate the path based on the D3.svg.area function. One thing to notice here is that the passing of the data object is not explicit. D3 implicitly understands that it should use the data bound to the SVG path object. Thus, it is able to use the data passed into the datum call without having it be specified. Next, we call the d3.axis operator for the x-axis. First, the code appends an SVG group element to hold the x-axis. Then, the group element is given the class of x-axis. Then, it is transformed translated by the height of the inner drawing space. Then, the x-axis function is called. This creates the full x-axis. Finally, we call the d3.axis operator for the y-axis. First, the code appends an SVG group element to hold the y-axis. Then, the group element is given the class of y-axis. Then, the y-axis function is called. Then, we append text to the y-axis for an axis label. This creates the full y-axis. And that is the end of the callback function and the end of the d3.tsv function. When this is done, the graph will have been fully generated. Let's now build this part by part in JavaScript. JavaScript code build. Because in the example, the building of the chart happens inside of the callback function, we will use a more simple anonymous function in the JavaScript console. All right, to the JavaScript console. We start by saving the example data into the data.tsv file, which lives in the folder, where we will start the Python Simple HTTP server. Next, we start the Python Simple HTTP server from the command line. Now we have the server going and have the data file ready to be served up. Next, we make sure the index.html file is saved in the right place and has D3 being loaded into it. We can see the web page. We open the Chrome Developer Tools and test to make sure D3 loaded correctly and then clear the screen. Next, we go step by step building the visualization. We start by defining the callback error and callback data variables, which will be used to house the data we get back from the D3.tsv function. The first step from the example is defining the margins and the width and height of the inner drawing space. Next, define the date parsing function. Next, define the x scaling function as well as the range of the function. Next, define the y scaling function as well as the range of the function. Remember to pay attention to the fact that the range has height first and then zero. Next, define the x axis function and provide it with a scale and orientation. Next, define the y-axis function and provide it with a scale and orientation as well. Next, define the D3 area path generator function. Remember that y0 gets drawn from left to right and y1 gets drawn from right to left. This is a closed piecewise linear curve SVG path. Next, define the SVG container and the inner drawing space. Next is where we are going to differ a bit from the code of the example. Instead of defining an anonymous callback function that does all of the generating of the chart in one go, we'll define a callback function that assigns the data and error to variables.
We'll then use the callback error and callback data variables to build the area chart. Inside of the callback function, we have a console log of an array of the callback error and callback data dot length so that we can see what is inside of each one. We can see that the callback error was null and that the length of the callback data array is 1280 elements. Next, we use the D3 array for each iterator to go through the 1280 element array and change the string values to either JavaScript date objects or numbers. Next, define the domain of the xscale function and then check to see what the domain is. Next, define the domain of the yscale function and then check to see what the domain is. Next, create the SVG area by using the D3 area path generator function. You can see that the SVG path was generated. Next, the X axis is created. Note again that the transform translate moves the X axis group element to the bottom of the inner drawing space. If we click into the SVG group element for the inner drawing space, you can see the SVG group element with the class X axis. This is the X axis. Lastly, the Y axis is created. You can see the Y axis and the price text anchor declaring that it is a price in dollars. If we click into the SVG group element for the inner drawing space, you can see the SVG group element with the class Y axis. This is the Y axis. And there we go, we have the chart. Let's close the Chrome developer tools to get a better look. You can see the full picture. The only difference between this and the example was the styling applied to the various DOM elements. And with that, we built the basic chart area chart. We used data served from a web server and processed it through an asynchronous XHR call provided by the D3.TSV type specific method. The chart was created using the D3.SVG.area functionality, which creates a closed piecewise linear curve that is fed into the SVG path variable D. The summary. This video provided a visual code walkthrough, a JavaScript code build, and the summary.